Greetings, I'm Dr. Rhonda L. Hamilton, and this is the first episode for the Mindfully Making a Difference podcast series. We're going to bring you weekly content to help open up the conversation surrounding mental health illness, mental health challenges, mental health exposures, mental health diagnosis, mental health stigmas. As you will often hear me say, I am the daughter of schizophrenia, as well as the daughter of drug addiction. I am a survivor of sexual abuse. And this is and will be my story, your story, our story as we move forward as a society and as a people. To talk about dealing with our mental challenges. We are in a pandemic and now more than ever the pandemic has revealed for many of us the dangers of not addressing our mental health. Many of us were living in suppressed states of mental health and what I mean by suppressed states Mental health is about the unsatisfactorily understanding of control of your thoughts, your behavior, psychological, your emotional states. Um, And many of us, all too often, whether we come out of a relationship the wrong way, um, involuntarily, whether we're dealing with a financial matter that's spiraling out of control, Um, There are many instances in our living where we find ourselves challenged mentally, temporarily, um, or otherwise because of our emotions or lack of our ability to control our emotions or our behaviors. We're seeing it play out present day with the gun violence in many of the communities where we do our mental health advocacy, community outreach and work. We've got youth that are partaking in levels of crime and violence. Um, Those of us that work in the mental health field, we see it as uh, reaching out for help. They'll tell you otherwise because they are so frustrated, um, negative. The generational divides have them shutting down and not communicating healthily. Um, The lack of the resources out here for families and individuals and our youth that are challenged with mental health realities are very slim and scarce. How much money you make and where you live should not be determining factors of whether or not you're going to receive qualified, comprehensive services and resources. And let's face it, mental health is so broad and has so many layers that many people are just not sure of what we're saying or speaking of when we say mental health. There's no doubt no one wants to wear the label of being someone diagnosed with a mental illness or challenge. Um, But on the same token, we all are susceptible as human beings. Again, for being emotionally unstable at times. When we lose a loved one, the grief that we carry sometimes for many of us is heavier and longer than for others. As the daughter of schizophrenia and drug addiction, I feel responsible for making sure that the many youth and the many individuals out there who have been uh, misjudged, um, who have wrongfully been charged who haven't been offered proper help so that they can live their best life. The Mindfully Making a Difference podcast series is done in honor and in dedication of our many, many individuals and families out there who are struggling with their mental health diagnosis, illnesses, challenges, you name it. The stigma surrounding mental health is so thick. What do we mean when we say stigma? If you look it up in a dictionary, it's going to tell you that it's the mark of disgrace. Who wants 
to be referenced as being a disgrace. I personally realized that we were struggling as a society, or at least here in the nation's capital, we were struggling as a city to truthfully help our citizens of mental health. My beautiful mom, Regina, for many, many years, I did not understand her struggle. I watched as she was ridiculed, as members of my family turned their head in embarrassment, as they judged her. I didn't want them to judge me or look upon me this way. And so for many years, I grew up ashamed of my mom. I didn't understand mental health. But what it appeared to be is that because my mom had mental challenges, she wasn't worthy of receiving the love that we are often born into or that we often take for granted and assume will always be extended by members of our family. As a little girl, I watched as my mom was looked upon as not being whole. I watched her as she unhealthily um, walked the streets picking up cigarette butts that she didn't place on the ground, seeking some form of relief, peace of mind, constantly in turmoil with voices, having conversations with people that weren't there. As a little girl, this confused me. And so I always gravitated towards the family members that I thought were cool, had my back that love me. And I'm not saying that there are not many that did, but it is important that we elevate these conversations primarily because we've got to educate folks about the reality of the awful, awful things that children of mental health and families of mental health go through. Abuse is rampant in communities and households of mental health. I was 22 or 23 when I had my first memory. And when I say my first memory, children of abuse oftentimes have traumatic experiences on a level that your mind will split or create other layers to protect you. And I am personally someone who's experienced that. I was 23 years old when a memory from my childhood came rushing back. And I thought it was something I saw on a TV or a movie play out. And it just kept nagging at me until I realized that it was my reality. A family member was abusing me when I was younger, and apparently I suppressed it. So when I talk about us coming through a pandemic and realizing that we've been living in suppressed mental states or living with suppressed mental understandings, it's not unrealistic. It is important that we have conversations so that we can rid ourselves of the feelings of inadequacy or the feelings of being um, responsible for the awful things that happen to us. Mindfully making a difference is about the many children out there, our many youth that are struggling with these awful realities. As a doctor, it is important that I am always focused on elevating the conversation so that those that are the least among us have the greatest opportunity for healing. As a daughter of schizophrenia and a daughter of addiction, 
it is my responsibility to talk about the existent disparities that exist for families of low income means, for families that are coming up in communities where the economic divide is so great that one or two grocery stores are all you'll get. The reality of families who are not receiving services or medications or preliminary understandings to help head off any dangerous mental health implications. Families who are living in their housing with rodent infestations, mold and hazardous understandings. Families who are living in cycles of despair, thinking that nobody cares. You know how we do. Mental health is real. And for many days and nights in my family, we grew up with turmoil, violence, people suffer. Research supports that it starts as early as in the womb. The incest, pedophilia, rape, domestic abuse, substance abuse that we live with in secret because of the shame that we learn to carry is harmful. Suicide is so real and too popular amongst our vulnerable and our young citizens. We must break the cycles. We must talk about these awful, awful realities in order that we can purge them from our existence. And by purge them, I mean if we could become more aware of the types of trauma and realities that many of our citizens and most importantly our children are living with. We're supposed to be able to do better when we know better. Mindfully making a difference is intentionally holding conversations that in our community we're either ashamed unwilling, uncaring, or unknowing. And the truth of the matter is, it's time. It's time for us to rise up and to do something positive to save our culture, to save our families, and most importantly, to save our future. This is Dr. Rhonda L. Hamilton. Mindfully Making a Difference is excited to raise the level of communication and conversation around our most vulnerable populations, our families that are struggling with mental health. The stigma is so thick. The responsibility is ours. And the timing is now. Join me weekly as we explore, observe, dissect, and lay out the reality for making a difference in families and communities that are still struggling with matters of mental health. It's time to educate ourselves on levels beyond those that exist or that have existed for us. It is time to be intentional in our understandings of what it will take to heal as a people, as a community, and as a nation. Mental health matters. And on the Mindfully Making a Difference podcast series, we're going to explore the many, many ways that we can liberate and save lives. 
the guns will not stop by themselves. The systemic understandings of keeping populations suppressed and depressed must end. It is time for us to rise up and to help increase the messaging surrounding mental health so that the quality of living for those families that are most deserving will be supported and elevated. I thank you for joining me for this first series. I hope that in its introduction you'll understand that mental health is very complex and has many layers. And it is for the, those that are the least among us to receive the most from us. I'm Dr. Rhonda L. Hamilton. Please plan to join me for the next series of Mindfully Making a Difference as we take a look at the Healthy DCME Leadership Coalition's intentional audacity to build the first ever standalone level two trauma and wellness center complete with the resource hub. I'm excited to talk to you about that, among other things. Until next time, stay safe, be peaceful, and mindfully try to make a difference.